Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I wanted to talk with you all very quickly about something. Um, first, I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers, my new subscribers, those of you who have not, you're welcome to do so. Thank you for those who visit and listen from time to time. Um, I invite all of you to check out my playlist. You will find several videos there that I have categorized so you can find videos of certain topics. I don't have every last one of my videos categorized, but I have a lot. I have enough where you can binge watch if you need to. So please feel free to check that out. Thank you all for your prayers. I appreciate all of you who pray for me and I ask you to continue to please do so because I definitely need it. I need it, need it, need it. So call me by name. My name is Arlene. So just call me out in front of the Lord and uh, pray for healing and pray for, for peace and pray for I will continue to remain steadfast with him and immovable. You know, just add all the good stuff in there, guys, and pray for my family. So, guys, I want to tell you something, and, and I feel the Lord has me in this area. And abuse does not come from God. Physical, emotional, sexual, verbal abuse, mental abuse, it's not God. Don't allow anyone to tell you that. Don't allow any church. Don't allow any spiritual mentor. Don't allow anyone in your family to tell you that abuse is okay and try to get you to hang around that and stick it out. That is not the way of God. That stuff will deplete you. That thing will destroy your very being. It will destroy you to the core because it's a spiritual thing and what it is physical, mental, emotional, verbal abuse. It comes from an unclean spirit. This comes from a person who has no rule over their own spirit. They can't stop the heat that comes out of their mouth. They have no rule and control over their temperament and their anger. And it is a demonic spirit by which they operate. And when it you allow that, it opens you up to unclean spirit because that is what that person is powered by. And what they do is they will try to justify themselves by saying, well, you made me do this or why did you, why did you do that? They're going to turn it all around. They're going to justify it. And then the church will try to put the icing on top to say that this is okay. Have you ever wondered why with all the teaching that you get in the ministry, you never hear them talking about child abuse. You never hear them talking about sexual assault or rape. You never hear them talking about spousal abuse in the church. They'll talk about things and say, God, pray for God to help you, but they don't touch on things because a lot of churches, they are scared to touch on these things. They're not talking about, you know, rebellious wives. If actually you may hear about that, but you're not going to hear about husbands abusing wives or wives abusing husbands, you know, and they don't talk about child abuse and people always will normally think child abuse is is only beating a child, but you can also be abusing your child verbally, verbally. You can be abusing your child by use of the Bible, using the Bible and making threats to your children and scaring them and saying all these things, elevating yourself by honor your mother and your father while skipping over, do not provoke your children to wrath. Yeah. So guys, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 42 and I'm going to read you three uh, where they're describing the Lord here and it's saying he shall not cry nor lift up nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. But let's focus on three. A bruised reed shall he not break and the smoking flax shall he not quench. A bruised reed. A broken reed, a broken plant, a broken twig, he is not going to break it. He's not going to go, oh, you're broken and just snap it. And a smoking flax will he not quench. Something that's burned and, and simmering, he's not going to go out and just finish it off. And if he will not, if he will not bruise a broken reed, nor will he quench a smoking flax, how much more does he honor you? How much more does he see us? 
If a bird falls out of the tree and he he's aware of it, how much more is he aware of when you have fallen from being slapped again and beaten again and pushed down? If he hears the cry of an animal or, or, or of a sheep that needs help, do you, do you not think he hears the cry of someone that is being beaten and someone, the cry of person who's once again been embarrassed and humiliated? If our God will not break a reed, he will not break a bruised reed, and he will not quench a smoking flax, you better understand that he is not okay with verbal, physical abuse to a soul. We have more value than the, than the grass and the reed and a flax. And we have more value to him than the birds in the air. So therefore understand that God does not tolerate abuse and don't let anybody tell you that. He was already beaten. He's already been mocked and scorched and abused and called names. And that only happened one time. And that happened when he had to submit to crucifixion. So he was beaten and swollen and had edema and a, blid and, and a bloody mouth. He already stood in and took that for you. You don't take that today from anybody. Understandably, you know, sometimes in places where there are high persecutions, you may be imprisoned and you may be beaten and abused for the gospel's sake because you're standing up for Christ and you're in a prison. You're in these places where there's a high level of persecution uh, of for believers. This is going to happen in situations like that. But we're talking about you being beaten by a husband, a wife, you being beaten by a parent to the point that you're swollen and you're filled with whelps. This is not okay. Island parents, understand this as well. Those of you island, uh, some of you from different arenas, you think that you're supposed to be beating your child down that way. That is not of God. Spare the rod doesn't mean break the rod and crack it and splinter it on your children child abuse gonna get you standing in front of god and hearing depart from me because that is a soul many parents are beating their children out of anger rage that is not of god that rage and that anger is because your spirit is unbridled and out of control and many times parents are trying to get their children to behave when they themselves have no rule over their spirits they want their children to behave a certain way when they can't control their mouth they can't control what they say they can't control their hands the quickest thing to do is slap a child across the face and their ear is ringing and they're bleeding and their mouth is 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 swollen and you're scratching them and you're fighting them fathers fighting your men you're fighting your sons like a brute beast fighting your daughters even women fighting your sons scratching your sons beating your daughter down like she is a strange woman down the street that is not of god but yet they will use the word and say, honor me. No, they are supposed to honor your position, but not that unclean spirit within you. And that's why many parents, you find out your kids grow up and they run away from you. And then you're waiting for the honors. But in fact, you were an abuser. You must repent of these things. Stop seeing your children as pawns and things. They are souls. They, are, they have purpose. As I told, as I said before, their, uh, Mary was a vessel that brought forth the son of God. Joseph was with her, but Joseph was not his father. Jesus was the son of God. But they were vessels that were used to carry out a purpose in this world in bringing forth and raising up Jesus to a certain point. And you have to understand that your children are not your own. They belong to God. They have a purpose and the Lord found it right to place them within your womb. And you had a responsibility. You would have never had those children if you, if it was not possible for you to do right. But there are many parents who choose to do something else and they choose, treat, treat their children as farmhands and treat them as objects and, and like their garden gnomes and things to be decorated and the house nanny and all these things. And God is going to hold you accountable. 
Churches are telling people to stay in relationships and marriages. They're not correcting parents. They are helping to sit in with CPS and these people and putting in a good word for the good, the good faithful deacon while he is beating his children. They turn the other cheek. Or I'm sorry. They turn their eyes the other way when they see the, the, the swelling and see the, the, the makeup covering the abuse of the husband that's beating the wife, the, they see the scratch marks on this man at the hands of his wife, but, oh, you're a man. You can take that. No, that is abuse. And guys, it's very important that you understand this and you, you do not allow yourself to be in this position. You need to understand who God is and that this is not his way. You read the Bible. You're not seeing that, you know, God is saying everyone should go around beating up people and doing whatever they want. Now, there are people who will go into, oh, well, what about the wars and what about these things and all this stuff? Guys, that is not abuse. And it's not the same thing. And I'm not going to go that far in this message because I believe this needs to be concise. Abusing your children, abusing your husband, abusing your wife, abusing your staff, because there are people who they are abusing their employees. They are maybe abusing people who you are a supervisor or a manager and you abuse people under you. You're abusive in how you schedule them. You get them back. You deny them leave. You give them a hard time. You get them back by putting them on this rigorous schedule. You mistreat them because of the color of their skin. You mistreat them because of what they look like. You abuse your authority because this is a woman. You exert your authority because this is a man and you want to, to exert yourself as a boss or as a supervisor over someone else. Abuse can also be sexual, sexual assault to include sexual harassment. None of these things are okay with God. And so people try to pretty up abuse and change it because, oh, well, I can't be abusive. I'm a woman. Oh, it, I can't abuse that person because that's a man. It's not abuse. These are my children. It's not abuse. This is my wife. That's just my husband. It's just them. That's not abuse. That's a black person. That's a white person. That's an Asian person. That's not abuse because we follow a caste system. Those who are in India following the caste system, treating people a certain way and still saying that you know the Lord. What God do you follow that would only say only those who are on, of, uh, of my upper extremities of this God, of the head of the God, then you're in this cast and you're good enough. And if you're part of my arms, you're good enough. And if you're part of my, my lower extremities, you're good enough. And everybody else should be mistreated. And you see these lovely individuals who are dressed so well and look so good and successful. And they're considered to be the better cast or, or the better group of people mistreat and be so wicked and evil to other people. Abuse. God does not like it. And there are many people that's doing a lot of good things in the world thinking that they can, they can paint over and cover and conceal the wicked and evil things that they do. Stop embarrassing your children. Stop mistreating people because of their race. Stop hiring or not hiring people because of the color of their skin. Stop being selective in what certain people can do and not going to do. Because you have certain people of certain races, all they're good enough to do is mop your floors and 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 do the and 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 clean tables, but you won't give them opportunities. You won't allow them to go and learn and do better and to excel, given the same opportunities you're, that you're giving to other people. That is abuse. Stop embarrassing your children. It's, I keep going back to children. Yelling and screaming at your children in front of their friends and doing things to embarrass them, slapping them over when they have guests over, yelling at them. They can't have anyone over because there's so much tension, embarrassing and putting your children on Facebook, doing Facebook lives and beating your children on television and shaving their heads on television. I've seen a mother do that. I believe she was a, a stepmother shaving the head of a young man live on Facebook. And that was such a wicked, wicked and evil thing. You do not need to chastise your children publicly and out in the streets. You are supposed to correct that child, not break their very spirit. 
And the same way that those videos are have gone viral and they're everywhere, understand that those acts and those behaviors are recorded in the books of judgment that will be open on the day you stand before God. Please repent of this behavior while you have an opportunity. Please repent from the things that you're doing while you have an opportunity. And please have it in your mind enough to understand that God does not tolerate abuse. If he's not breaking a reed, then he, a bruised reed, and he's not putting out a smoldering flax. Understand that no one else should be breaking you and trying to put you out.